Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the new Yankee Workshop, where today we're going to build this pencil post bed. It's made out of poplar, and it features tapered and beveled posts. We found the original during a visit to the Shelburne Museum in Vermont. That's next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. On 45 acres that look over Lake Champlain, there are over 30 antique buildings assembled from all corners of the great state of Vermont. And they're filled with some wonderful accessories and furniture. And here we're approaching the Dutton House where there's something I want you to see inside. Now this room here is one of five bedrooms. Look at this piece, a nice pine chest, known as a Harvard chest, because of all this hand paintwork on the front of it, even buildings, and it's in beautiful condition. But over here is what I wanted you to see, this pencil post bed. Now it's not only decorative, but very functional. In the summer you would just keep this light canopy, but in the winter you would wrap material around the post, creating like a chamber, would hold the heat in and you'd stay much warmer. Let's look at some of the details. The headboard has this nice triangular shape to the top of it, and it seems to be just mortised into the post. Let's see what kind of frame it has. Okay, it has a rope spring and a nice three by three frame, good and heavy, which is just mortised, I guess, yeah, mortised into the post. And everything is held together with these metal fasteners, some kind of screw. The post is interesting. It's square where the rails come in. And below and above it, it's tapered on four sides. And then it's chamfered, giving it eight faces. It also has kind of a nice color. I think I'll go get my pad and my tape measure and measure it up. Before we get started, I want to reassure you that if you'd like to build an exact copy of today's project, that a measured drawing and a materials list is available. And you'll hear more about that before the program ends. I also want to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with each of your power tools. Knowing how to use your tools safely greatly reduces the possibility of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now I'll show you how I built today's project. Now that's not going to go anywhere. And when it came time to build our version of the pencil post bed, I made a couple significant changes from the one that I saw at the Shelburne Museum. First of all, I wanted our bed to accommodate a modern box spring and mattress. And those two pieces take about 16 inches in height. If I had set that on the rail system of the one at Shelburne, the mattress would have been way too far above the floor. So I lowered the rail system, slightly shortened the legs, and I raised the headboard up because if I didn't raise the headboard up, it would be behind the mattress. Now I did keep the nice tapered post, almost exactly like the one at Shelburne, an inch and an eighth at the top, tapering down to about two and a half inches square where the rails meet it. Now the choice of materials was a little difficult. At first I thought I would use pine, but pine sometimes can be unstable and I didn't want a post that would twist. So I chose poplar, a favorite among woodworkers because it mills nicely and it takes paint very well and it'll stay stable, it won't twist. Now, the real challenge in this project is how to make this tapered post. It's tapered on four sides and then beveled on the corners, giving me a very elegant and thin post. And to do that, I made myself a jig. The jig looks a little complicated, but it's not too bad. I made it out of some scrap plywood that was sitting around the shop. And the most important feature is this slot right here. And it's made to fit over the rip fence on my table saw slips over it in such a way that it's snug enough that it won't move side to side, yet not so tight that I can't slide it back and forth easily. Now I've set a roller out front so as I use it, it has a place to rest. And also another one back here, so as we pull it back, it has something to sit on. Now the post 
sits in the jig, but it's got, jig has two cleats, one at the back and one up at the front, which are about an inch further apart than the length of my post. And then I made these little hangers. There's a little cleat on it, and it sits over this cross piece. And the bottom of the hanger corresponds with the top of the table saw surface, so they're exactly in the same plane. Now I've taken the hanger and measured up from the bottom one and a quarter inches, which is half the measurement of my post. And this will give me a pivot point, so I'll just fasten a screw to the center of the post. Okay, now I'll take the post and drop it into the jig and fasten this end to the cleat to the right of the blade path. Now I'll go down the other end and swing the post out to this layout line. The hanger should line up there. And that wasn't by accident. That was a line that was established in the making of the prototype. Now what I've done is actually position the post. These lines are layout lines for the lower portion of the post, the leg. And if I was to take a tape measure and measure from the fence to the layout line, see it's 7 and 3 eighths there. It's also 7 and 3 eighths here. Now that means that the layout line is parallel to the blade. I'll just slide this back. And you can start to see how it's going to cut a taper as it moves along the blade. OK, now I get up pretty much where my layout lines are. I'm going to have to slide my rip fence in just a little bit. I want the inside edge of the blade to just be on my layout lines. I don't want to taper beyond this point because this is where my rails are going to intersect. I only want to taper down here. OK, now I just slide it back lift the whole jig slightly and just spin the blank. Now you really get to see the purpose of that pivot point and I don't even need layout lines anymore. I'll just repeat the process. Well now I'll just cut the other two sides just as I did with those and then I'll do the other three posts. What we've just completed is the tapering of the four sides of the post. Now I want to bevel the corners. Now to make that cut, I have to reposition the post in the hanger. And to do that, I want to move the screw up about a half an inch and reattach it. And now I'll just reinstall it in the jig on the same marks I used before. Now this line that I'm darkening on my hanger is perpendicular to the saw table. And if I take my post and turn it so that the corner aligns with that pencil line, I know it's at 45 degrees, the bevel that I'm looking for. Oh yeah, now before I do any cutting, I need one more layout line. I'm going to go down an inch and a quarter from this line, put a mark, and that's the point I want to stop cutting at because the rest of this area is going to be scalloped out. So once that's marked, I just turn my post 45 degrees, and we'll do a trial cut. Well, now I'll do that to all the corners of all four posts. Well, now I'm ready to taper the upper portion of the post. And it's a very long, gradual taper. But it's done the same way using the jig. I've made a couple adjustments, however. First thing is to take the post and flip it end for end. Now, the back hanger is in exactly the same position it was for the other cuts. But the front hanger here has been moved about two and a quarter inches over to the right. I also had to make a fence adjustment, and I did that the same way as we did for the bottom leg. I slid the whole jig forward and sighted down by the saw blade 
so that I won't cut beyond this layout line. Other than that, all the steps are exactly the same. Making these pencil posts is the most time consuming part of this project, but the rest of it will go a lot quicker. Now the next thing I want to do is finish cutting these scallops out. And to do that I suppose I could use my hand coping saw, but I'm going to use the band saw. Well, now I'm using my belt sander to remove any of the imperfections left by the saw blade and smooth out the post. Well, now I'm going to take the post and set it in that cradle so that I can sand the beveled edges. Now, the thing that I want to be careful about is that I don't want to run the belt sander so far ahead that I might nick this corner. I'll sand as close as I can and dress the rest of this with my drum sander. Well, I think that's enough for today. Tomorrow we'll mortise the post, make the rails, and the headboard. Welcome to another wet, damp morning here in New England. We can always use the rain. And anyway, it gives me an excuse to come here in the shop where it's nice and toasty and finish up my pencil post bed. I've been doing a little bit of work this morning, starting to make mortises in the post where the rails will meet. Let me show you over on the bench. First thing that I did was to lay out the location of the mortise on each post. And there's going to be two. One along this side, which could be used to connect a cross rail and another one on the adjacent side for one of the long rails along the side of the bed. Let me show you how I did it. I used my drill press. And the first thing that I did was set it up with a 7 8 inch Forstner bit. And this is a bit that's shaped in such a way that as you cut, you end up with a perfectly flat bottom. I've also adjusted the drill press so that it has a limit. It'll only go down an inch deep in my wood. Now with a nice, sharp chisel, I'm going to finish cleaning out the mortise. I almost don't even need a hammer with this poplar. There's really not going to be any surprises. It's nice wood to work with. Just shave down next to my line. Now well, that looks pretty good. Now let me show you the next part of the operation. But before we do it, I'm going to go back to the prototype. Let's take this corner apart. You know, any bed has to be able to be assembled and disassembled easily so that you can move it from room to room. And there's a lot of different systems that have been used over the years. And let me show you what I've done here. Okay. You can see there's a little bolt sticking out of the end of my rail, the side rail. And actually it's uh, called a hanger bolt. It's lagged on one end and it's threaded on the other end. I've lagged it right into the side rail, and that'll be permanently set in that position. And each time you assemble it and disassemble it, you just take the threaded end and slide it in and out of the rail. And what you've really got here is two holes, a 3 8 hole for the bolt to come through, and a larger counter bore, an inch and an eighth, for the washer, and the nut to be recessed in so that they'll be out of sight. This just makes it very easy to take the better part and put it back together. Now, the first thing I want to do is make this counter bore, and I'll do that over at the drill press. Well, that takes care of the counter bore. Now I'll drill the 3 8 inch hole. And remember, it's always better to drill the larger hole first. And that takes care of the 3 8 inch hole. Now here at the foot of the bed, the rail is permanently attached to the post, as well as up at the headboard area. Now if you look over here on the post, you can see a little plug right there. It's actually a bung made out of poplar, 
which I sanded down after the glue dried. And that's just to fill a hole that was necessary for these two and a half inch bugle head screws that hold it all together. And now I'm going to drill those three eighths inch counterbores. Well, now that's the hole for the wooden bung. Now I'll change to a smaller bit to make a pilot hole for the screw. Now over here at the radial arm saw, I have the stock for the rails. Two shorter pieces for the head and foot rails and two longer pieces for the side rails. The wood is again poplar. It's six inches wide and an inch and a quarter thick. And what I'm doing is cutting the tenons on each end. I set the radial arm up with a stop block. And what that does is controls the length of my tenon, which I want to be exactly one inch. And then in the radial arm, I've installed this twin blade dado head cutter. And that'll be used to plow out the material. I spent a lot of time setting the height so that I end up with exactly a 7 8 inch thick tenon so that it'll fit snugly in those mortises that I've made. Take a look at how it's done. Now the next step on the tenon is to make a shoulder cut along the narrow side. I want to remove about 3 eighths of an inch material top and bottom. And to do that, I've raised the radial arm saw and installed a higher fence. It'll hold the work steadier, and it keeps it perpendicular to the table. And now I'll just nibble away that shoulder. Now let's see how this is going to fit. Slip it in there. Oh, just snug. That's the way I like to see it. Now, if we tilt this back, you'll notice that this tenon projects into the other mortise. And if I was to try to put the other rail in here, they would bump into one another. So I'm going to relieve that corner by just planing it off with a block plane. Well, I think that should take care of it. Now we're ready for some assembly. Well, now's a good time to sand off all the layout lines. Now, here I've set up the two posts that will be part of the headboard system of the bed. And I've attached the tops together with a temporary cleat. And that'll hold them the right distance apart, which for my bed happens to be 62 and a quarter inches. Now, down at the bottom here, I can now install this rail. And I'm just going to slip it together dry. No glue yet, because I'll have to take it apart one more time. And I'll hold it in place with some screws in the holes that I drilled earlier. OK. Well, you know, I've gone through all this temporary pre-assembly for only one reason, and that's to size my headboard. Because remember, we've got two tapered posts. They get wider as they get up to the top. And every post is going to vary a little bit. So in order to get an exact fit, I have to do this pre-assembly step. Now I'm ready to lay out the location of the headboard, which is nine inches up from the top of that rail, and then another seven inches for the height of the headboard where it intersects the post. Now what I'm going to do is take some very precise measurements between those two points and record them. OK, that's 59 and 15 sixteenths. See, an eighth of an inch, and that's important. Now over here, I have a couple pieces of 1 by 8 poplar that I've edge glued together. 
and I'll unclamp them now that the glue is dry and lay out the headboard. Okay, that finishes the layout. Now to cut the ends, I'm going to take my bevel gauge and just set it to the angle. It's very slight, but it's important. And then I'm going to take the bevel gauge over to the radial arm and set it. Now I'm going to bring the saw blade out. You can see it's very slight, but it's important. Now we'll swing it over until that fits right. Lock it in and we're ready to make a cut. Okay, with the ends cut, bring it over to my bench, let it hang out over the edge, clamp it in place with the bench dogs. And now I'm just going to take a circular saw and trim the angles, cutting them strong, leaving the mark. Okay, that'll take care of the sanding of the headboard. Now the only edge I still have to finish is this one right here, the top edge. I could have used the belt sander, but I want to show you something. The joiner does a great job. What I'm doing here is putting some marks for these little biscuits that I'm going to use to actually join the headboard to the post. They're simple, they're fast, and they're very strong. Over here is the tool that I use to cut the slots for the biscuits. What you do is you set the tool on the edge of the board, holding it on this fence, and align the pencil mark I made before with the line that's scribed on the tool. Now on the other side, you'll see there's a slot. And as you operate the tool and pivot it, a blade swings down, cutting a half moon. It's real simple. Watch. Okay, now for the corresponding slot in the post. I'm going to take the fence off of the tool and just use the face of it as a guide to align with this pencil mark here, which is the face of the headboard, and once again, the scribe line with the pencil mark I made earlier. Okay, now we're ready for some glue, the biscuits, and we'll clamp it all together. These biscuits are made out of beech wood, and a little bit of glue on them actually makes them swell up, and you'll never get them apart. I've got to work fast now. And now a couple of nice long pipe clamps. The rail joining the two posts at the foot of the bed is assembled just like it was at the head. Some glue and some screws. Now we'll plug those holes with these bungs. A little glue on them, drive them in. After the glue dries, I'll cut them off and sand them smooth. Okay, with that hole drilled, you can now take the bolt and put the lagged end in. And I've put a couple nuts on the end and tightened them against one another so that I can use my socket to just spin it into the hole. Slide it back in. 
Now a washer and a nut. Tighten it down, and I'll do the same thing to the other three connections. Boy, we're moving right along now. One more step. I've got to make and install this cleat right here. It's like a ledge that'll support the box spring. Now this cleat is nothing more than a piece of one and a quarter inch by one inch thick stock that I fastened to the side rail with some glue and some screws. And that about takes care of it. Now remember, the one at the Shelby Museum was kind of a salmon color. What color would you paint this one? Well, this is kind of a buff color. It's not as vivid as that salmon that we saw up in Vermont, but I think it's pretty nice. It should go with just about anything. Boy, couldn't you picture this with a wonderful old early American quilt setting on it? I hope that with the help of this videotape and the measured drawing that you'll have the opportunity to build one too. Norm Abram is the author of the book, The New Yankee Workshop, which is available in bookstores and libraries nationwide. <laughs>